Hello friends, this video on hydrocarbons part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let's study combustion of alkene. So this is nothing but burning of alkene actually. So when you heat alkene in presence of oxygen or air completely, it gives large amount of heat, for example petrol lungs, right? They are all hydrocarbons, when you heat them it gives energy. So for example, methane, if you see is alkane, you heat this, it presence of oxygen, you get carbon dioxide and water. And it will get this 890 kilojoules per moles of energy also. You take butane also, you heat this, you get carbon dioxide, water and energy. This is the example of combustion where you heat uh, alkane in presence of oxygen. It's complete combustion. Correct. So the general formula is I have a combustion, uh, the alkane, CN, H2, N plus 2, this is the alkane. So this will need 3n plus 1 by 2 oxygen to give n carbon dioxide. So there's n alkene, Cn will give n carbon dioxide and n plus 1 molecule of water. Right? And sometimes the combustion is not complete. Sometimes it is incomplete. Correct? Sometimes it is incomplete combustion. Correct? Where we have insufficient amount of air. So with this you get carbon black and this carbon black is used as ink. It is used to prepare ink, correct? So this is the reaction I have by methane. When it reacts with oxygen, there is an incomplete combustion, you get this carbon black. So in case of complete combustion, combustion we got carbon dioxide and water. In case of incomplete combustion, we get carbon black and that is used for ink. Let's talk about the controlled oxidation of alkanes. So if you saw just now that in combustion when you heat alkane with sufficient amount of oxygen it burns to give carbon dioxide and these are all free radical reaction. Right? They are all free radical reaction and uh, it gives a lot of energy and although this is exothermic they need some energy to start. The activation energy is pretty high. So they need high temperature to initiate, but once initiated, it gives huge energy. Correct. So in case of controlled oxidation, what happens is we have a regulated supply of oxygen and we use some catalyst. So with, with different catalysts, we get sometimes alcohol, sometimes aldehyde or we get acids. So we see, for example, methane, you heat with oxygen and you have this copper catalyst. You get alcohol, right? You got methanol. You have this methane, again, you heat with this other catalyst M2O3, you get aldehyde. Correct. Again, you have ethane. Correct. You heat with oxygen with the different catalyst, you get ethanoic acid. Correct. So we have CH33CH, you heat with KMNO4, you get this alcohol and this is all this one is only true for tertiary alkane. So we see controlled oxidation, different catalyst, all you get different output. So we have talked about complete combustion, we get carbon dioxide, we have incomplete combustion, we get carbon black, and then we have controlled oxidation where you get sometimes get alcohol, sometimes aldehyde, sometimes alcohol, sometimes aldehyde, and sometimes acids. Now we'll talk about isomerization of alkanes. So isomerization is the process when one molecule is transformed into another molecule, in exactly same molecular formula, you can say same atoms, but they are arranged in a different way. For example, I have ABC, it will be BAC. And why this happen? This is just to lower the energy. So if you have two different isomers, the one with the lower energy, you do isomerization, you get the one with the lower energy. And as I told, generally isomers, they have very less difference in energy. So in most of the conditions, isomerization occurs spontaneously because the difference in energy is pretty less. But some in some case, you need high energy also, right? And, and for example, N-alkanes, when you heat with aluminum chloride and hydrogen chloride, it gives these isomers. So you take this N-alkanes, right? I took this hexane. When I'm heating with aluminum chloride here, you get the branched one. You get the branched. This is called isomerization. Now the question is, 
why you get isomerization and what is the role of AlCl3 and HCl. See AlCl3 and HCl, I'll show you the reaction. What happens is you take AlCl3 and you react with HCl. It will give you AlCl4 minus in H plus. Right? So these guys, what will happen is this guy, AlCl4 minus in H plus, this AlCl4 minus will somehow eat on hydrogen from this. So it will form a cation. So it will form carbocation actually. In most of the case, some case we get carboanion and free radical also, but in most of the case we get the formation of carbocation in case of isomerization, right? So we get carbocations. Now carbocations have formed, for example, in this case we have got a straight carbocation. Then carbocations, as we know that tertiary carbocations are more stable, right? Three degree carbocations are more stable than two degree and one degree. So it, the carbocations will uh, rearrange itself to three degree generally because they are more stable. And once it gets my hydrogen back, it forms a branch chain. Correct. And since this reaction needs carbocations and all, right, it can happen in the presence of platinum catalyst also. Right? Because this metal breaks the hydrogen bond. That's what the requirement is. The requirement is none of the hydrogen bond breaks and you form, from this you form carbocation. Cation, correct? So either you can use ALCL3 and HCL with this, this guy will consume or eat one hydrogen form carbocation or you use my metal catalyst, for example platinum, that will also break the bond, this hydrogen bond and then it will form a carbon. Correct. So you got the logic, for example in this case, right, CH2, CH2, CH2 and CH2 plus. And suppose you got this carbocation, right, when you remove an hydrogen. Now, is this stable? No, it is not stable. So the molecule will rearrange itself, right. So it will form something like this, suppose this, anything it can form, right. Just assuming, yeah, maybe this. So, if you see in this case, this is stable, more stable because it is primary, second, tertiary carbocation. So, and then it will get hydrogen. So, you will see this kind of structures. They are the majority ones, that. Okay, the branch ones are the majority. Why? Because the logic is pretty same, easy actually. You have the alkane, you react with ALCL3, HCl, or with platinum catalyst, you get the carbocations. Carbocation rearrange itself to Third tertiary degree because they are more stable and then they, once they get hydrogen back you get the branch branches and that's the whole process called isomerization right. the next is aromatization so as I have told you so many times that aromatic substances are more stable they have less energy so aliphatic substance some of the aliphatic substance will try to convert into aromatic substance even it has got the chance right so this is my aliphatic compound for example right now they will form want to become aromatic because it's more stable correct so if you take this aliphatic compound and you heat this under suitable catalyst, in suitable catalyst, high temperature and uh, high pressure, what will happen? It will convert into aromatic compound. So it involves three steps actually. The first one is the dehydrogenation. So one of this uh, hydrogen will be removed. The first step is dehydrogenation. Once that is done, the next step will be uh, this guy, cyclization. You form the cycles and that in some case even uh, this is what you call you form cyclic cycles right in some case even uh, isomerization also exists right in some case that also happens so so in this case if you see you lose one hydrogen right so you get this for example like in draw in this fashion so this is my compound right you lose one hydrogen you get this guy dehydrogenation and cyclization. You lose more hydrogens, you lose three more hydrogens, you get 
three more, three double bonds. And this is my basic. Correct. So the catalyst uses oxides of vanadium, chromium, and molybdenum. Can okay, take one more example here. So this is was my uh, aliphatic compound. We lost one hydrogen and we got something like this. Intermediate actually. And we lost three more hydrogens here to get something like this. Correct. Now let's see how this alkane behaves when you heat them with steam, this hot, very, very hot water, right? So, example, methane, when you react with steam at a very high temperature, in the presence of the nickel catalyst, it forms carbon monoxide and dihydrogen gas. And this is used to prepare dihydrogen gas in the industry. For example, it's methane, you use with heat with water, very high temperature, steam, and the steam, in the nickel catalyst, you get carbon monoxide and hydrogen gas. The next is pyrolysis. Pyro means what? Heat. Lysis is break. You heat something on breaking. That is called pyrolysis. So, if you have higher alkanes, you heat them at very high temperature and decompose to lower alkanes or alkenes. This is called pyrolysis. This whole process is called pyrolysis. It's a free radical reaction. Free radical reaction. For example, I have this guy. When you break this, either my hydrogen may come out or it may break into two parts. For example, it may become C4 and C2 or it may break into C3, C2, C1. So you never know how it will break, but it may break. You heat it very high temperature. And just like you have a big alkane, you heat it with a hammer, uh, right? It breaks. It, it can break anywhere. It can break into equal half also. It can break into three halves also. It can break into five half also. You never know. Right? So, if you see the oil and the petrol gas is produced from kerosene using pyrolysis. This is the process to prepare petrol gas from kerosene. We will take some numericals on this uh, alkanes chemical properties. The question is how do you account for the formation of ethane during chlorination of methane? When you do chlorination of methane, so you see, we see that we also get ethane. The question is how? Some traces of ethane also is formed. So let's try to find this. We know that chlorination of methane is what? Free radical reaction. So it has three steps. The first step is the chain initiation step. So in this, what happens, we have a chlorine, the sunlight breaks into chlorine free radical. Now I have chain propagation state. Chain propagation step. So in this, what can happen is I have my CH4, it will react with chlorine free radical to give CH3 dot and SCA. Correct. If you can have more actually in this, right? So now if you see here, I got one CH3 dot. So in chain termination step now, so in chain termination step, the CH3 free radicals can combine to form what? CH3, CH3, only 3 And that is why we also get ethane in this region. I mean, there can be other chain uh, reactions also in this, which we have discussed in the chlorination of methane, but this is, this is only required for me. I just wrote this. So here you get CH3 free radical, that is methyl free radical, and two methyl free radical combines to form. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.